Hello everyone, in today's video, I want to discuss to whom the gospel was given. The topic of witnessing to Jews is indeed crucial, but it's unfortunate that in many churches today it tends to be overlooked, criticized, or even tabooed as a subject not worth contemplating. Some may argue that there are many other important matters to focus on. However, it's essential to recognize the significance of this mission and the role it plays in God's plan of salvation. Ignoring it would mean missing out on a vital aspect of our faith and the fulfillment of God's purpose. It's our responsibility as believers to actively engage with this topic and seek ways to reach out to the Jewish community with love, compassion, and the gospel message. Romans 1.16 states, For I am not ashamed of the good news, for it is God's powerful instrument of salvation to everyone who believes, to the Jew first, and also to the Greek. This translation sheds light on the phrase usually translated as to the Jew first. Salvation through faith holds paramount importance for the Jew. This stems from the fact that they were chosen by God to receive the promise of the gospel, and divine prophecies were intended for them. Though this remains true, it's more likely that the phrase, to the Jew first, signifies a priority in sharing the gospel with Jews in our time, which the church should acknowledge. This doesn't necessarily mean that every individual believer should seek out Jews in the community and share the message before telling a Gentile about Jesus, although this is precisely what Paul does throughout the book of Acts. Today's believers, should take into account the priority of sharing the gospel with the Jewish people. Perhaps the most sound explanation of the concept of priority reflected in Romans 1.16 can be found in the statement of the Lausanne Committee for World Evangelization on the Jewish People Special Document No. 7. So there is a great responsibility that lies on the church to take Christ to the Jewish people. This does not imply that preaching to Jews is more significant in God's eyes, or that those engaged in Jewish evangelism have a higher calling. We recognize that this priority of Scripture is hard to understand and implement. We are not suggesting a radical interpretation of the to the Jew first principle, nor are we calling upon all evangelists, missionaries, and Christians to seek out Jews for witnessing before talking to non-Jews but we do call on the church to restore to God's covenant people their due place as defined by the Bible in the strategy of worldwide evangelization. Christians pray in the Lord's Prayer, Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Jews pray in the Kaddish, May he establish his kingdom in your lifetime and in your days, and in the lifetime of the entire house of Israel speedily and soon. In 2 Peter 3.12, it is mentioned that believers in Jesus should labor to hasten the coming of the day of the Lord. Perhaps one of the reasons for the priority of preaching the gospel, especially to the Jew in the present, is that neglecting the need to share the gospel with the Jewish people delays the establishment of God's kingdom on earth. So why should we restore the Jewish roots of the gospel? To bless both the church and the Jewish people. How will the church be blessed? God told Abraham, I will bless those who bless my people. This is the blessing that Christians can experience right now. Any blessing bestowed upon the Jewish people, whether spiritual or material, as mentioned in Romans 15.27, will result in blessings returning to the church. In the words, Cast your bread upon the waters, for you will find it after many days, there's a reminder that acts of generosity and kindness, such as supporting the Jewish people, may not bring immediate rewards, but will eventually yield positive outcomes and blessings for the church. However, the church is destined for additional blessings as well. Paul speaks to non-Jewish Christians about the Jewish people, saying, For if their rejection means the reconciliation of the world, what will their acceptance mean but life from the dead? Romans 11.15 this life from the dead is significant for both Jews and Christians alike, serving as a powerful incentive for successful preaching of the gospel to the Jewish people. It's crucial to emphasize the term successful here because Paul does not promise this reward simply for effort. 
This life from the dead will only come when the Jews are genuinely accepted. This life from the dead is not what some Christians understand as a mere awakening or an influx of energy and well-being. It will be nothing less than resurrection, and it will occur only when all Israel is saved. The next question is, how will the Jewish people be blessed? They will realize their original purpose as a light to the nations and receive the redemption they have long awaited. This redemption will be both individual and collective, as we have already seen. But how will these blessings come to the Jewish people? Certainly they will come from God, but not directly. Rather through the church, specifically through non-Jewish Christians when they finally provoke jealousy in the Jews, as referenced in Romans 10:19, 19, 11, 11, and 11, 14. Is there a reason for Jews to be jealous of the church right now? Unfortunately, Christianity, especially in many Protestant denominations, has lost its corporate spirit. How can Christianity overcome this deficiency? There is only one way. Christianity must awaken jealousy in the hearts of Jews. How can Christians achieve this? By showing God's mercy to the Jewish people. Indeed, this is precisely what Paul instructs non-Jewish believers in at the end of his letter to the Romans, Romans 9-11. Just as you, non-Jewish believers, were once disobedient to God but have now received mercy because of Israel's disobedience, so too Israel is now disobedient in order to receive God's mercy, provided that you show to them the same mercy that God has shown to you. For God has imprisoned everyone in disobedience so that He may show mercy to all. Some may interpret this passage as merely asserting that God will extend the same mercy to the Jews as He did to the Gentiles. While that is true, it does not exhaust its meaning. After sternly warning non-Jewish Christians in Romans 11, 17, 24, not to boast against the broken branches or the unsaved Jews, Paul concludes his instruction by urging them to do something entirely opposite, to show them mercy. The mercy that God has given them, they must pass on to the Jews. Paul doesn't call for passive observation of how God will show His mercy to the Jewish people. He implores non-Jewish Christians to actively show mercy to the Jews right now. God calls for active participation in His program of salvation. This is the only way to soften the hearts of the unsaved Jews and provoke jealousy in them. Nothing else will suffice. It is rather unfortunate that only a few have attempted to do so. Paul is so deeply moved and inspired by this wonderful plan of God that at the end of his letter to the Romans, in chapter 11, he pours out a song from the depths of his soul, so joyful and perfect that nothing in the entire New Testament can compare to it. It is with this song that I conclude this appendix, as well as the main part of the book, O oh, the depth of the riches both of the wisdom and knowledge of God! How unsearchable are His judgments and His ways past finding out! For of Him and through Him and to Him are all things. To Him be the glory forever. Amen. Israel was chosen not merely for the sake of being chosen, but for a specific purpose. What is this purpose? Israel was chosen as a missionary nation, a people who would reveal God to all the other nations on earth. Jesus emphasized in his conversation with the Samaritan woman, John 4.22, that salvation comes from the Jews. But where did Jesus get the idea that the Jews would save the world? It's quite simple. He carefully read the Tanakh, the Old Testament. In the book of the prophet Isaiah 49.6, it speaks about Israel. Let's also look at Isaiah 43, but 1, 12, and 13. Some use this passage, like Jehovah's Witnesses, claiming it refers to them. However, it is actually about the people of Israel, how they are witnesses of God. Interestingly, even some non-Jews at that time had some understanding of this. The Samaritan woman mentions knowing about the coming Messiah, who will declare everything to the people. This indicates that even non-Jews of that time had some knowledge of messianic expectations, where, when, and what was expected to happen. In conclusion, this profound message from the Apostle Paul encourages us as believers to actively extend God's mercy to the Jewish people today.
It's a divine plan that can soften hearts and lead to a powerful awakening. Let's not be passive observers, but active participants in God's program of salvation. The church must strive to remember that historically, contextually, and according to the covenant, the gospel was and will always be especially and primarily for the Jewish people because it is profoundly rooted in Jewish heritage. In the 11th chapter of the letter to the Romans, it is mentioned that non-Jews can be included and grafted in, just as with Israel. In the letter to the Ephesians, it is shown how believers from non-Jewish backgrounds are warmly welcomed into their new home like never before and are now cordially invited to become part of the family. A red carpet is laid before the nations, inviting them to join in the inheritance of Israel and be adopted into a house that was not originally theirs. Similarly, when we share the gospel with the Jewish people, we are not asking them to abandon the faith of their forefathers. We are inviting them to come back home. If you found this message inspiring and thought-provoking, please consider supporting our channel. Give us a thumbs up, leave a comment below, and most importantly, subscribe to our channel for more insightful content like this. Share this video on your social media platforms to spread the message of God's mercy and love. Together, let's be a part of this incredible journey. Thank you for watching.